Hello everyone, it's Ali Diecast, and in this video we've kind of got a random selection of carded cars. We haven't gotten around to the carded ones yet, but we got boxes and boxes of those, so I thought we'd take a look at them. Some of these are getting shipped out tomorrow, so it might be our last chance to see them. Um, and uh, they aren't really related to each other. So also my video is going to cut out, I'm sure, here in a little bit, so I will just continue when it does. Uh, right off the bat, we got a 2006 Bone Shaker. You know what's special about this one? If it's got that little pirate skull, skull and crossbone symbol, it is the first edition. Um, so the uh, story of the image shown on the screen right now is it was sent uh, as a 2000 apology for the fans of the 2006 Master Set. This is the car that was released after this one. They... Um, released a bone shaker a lot looking like this one, not this one, but just like this one, to apologize for all the mess ups they did in the 2006 master set. So if you've got one of these, check it. And if it's loose, I think the master set edition was loose. Uh, you might have yourself a pretty expensive little car, but this one's just a regular old, regular old main line, nothing special. I gotta find where I can put my cars here. here we'll put them over to the side there. So next up, We've got a Solar CX-4, and I remembered the name this time. Yes, one of the one of the cars I always seem to forget the name. I'm going to turn out the light on the white ones. Um, this one's Skippo. Skippo's a game. My parents play Skippo a lot. Uh, this one with the clear windows would have been worth something, but it has the blue windows. And the blue windows aren't worth anything. 1999. It's. Uh, did you know this car was loosely based on a, a Aston Martin Group C series car, which I'll try and show a picture of it. Looks similar, but uh, it is widely believed that this car was based off of that. So it's interesting. Some of the Hot Wheels that you think are fake are real, and some of them you think are real are fake. <laughs> this one I was kind of excited to see, and this one was a Volkswagen SP2. It's a Brazilian Volkswagen. They don't sell this here in the U.S. And I don't know much about the car. Let me get it in focus there. I don't know much about the car, but uh, SP2 is an acronym for uh, Sao Paulo, which uh, is in Brazil. So, no, not a city. Sao Paulo means something. It means something like happy car or something like that. Anyways, totally butchering that. Um, there's an orange one, a red one, and a white one. They didn't make very many of these. There's only three castings of this, as far as I know. Uh, one of them was in an Easter pack. One of them was in a five pack. And I think this one, part of the main lines. So not an easy one to find. You don't see it a lot. Next up is, I got to get going here. got to go faster. Too much blank screen space. This one, one of my favorite series of all time. It is the Crazed Clown series. I don't think we go more than a few videos without mentioning it's got to be the scariest, creepiest graphics ever on a Hot Wheels. Look at that crazy, scary clown there, the Crazed Clown. This is the MASH Metropolitan, which is not a real car per se. There we go. It is uh, based on a real car, though. So, oh, by the way, this came out in 2002-ish. The casting was based off a customized Nash, Nash Metro, which was a subcompact car. Uh, early on, I think subcompact, the Nash Metro subcompact came out, uh, I want to say early 80s, late 70s, maybe. This is obviously not a compact car. You're not going to park that guy in a compact space down at the mall. And you're probably not going to put scary clowns on your car. You should never put scary clowns on your car. Next up, we've got the Street Art Series Ambulance. I always see this one, and I think it looks like it was parked in the ghetto too long. Somebody came up and tagged it. <laughs> um, so if this was a three-spoke version, it would be more rare. 1999-ish again. Um, the uh, first ambulance was part of the red line cars. This is the second casting. They call this the 1989 casting. It really doesn't look anything like the red line version, but this is the casting that you see more often. 
with the ambulance. Next up, Dairy Delivery was happy to see this one. Probably keep this one in its package. You guys know that I tend to uh, customize the dairies, but I don't have this one, so this one will probably stay in its package. Um, interesting little fact, and if I, I was not prepared, let me find my dairy delivery. Just a second here. Here we go. Let me open this guy up. Oh, I can't open it up. Oh, for crying out loud. Just a second. Just a second here. Wait a second. We're looking around. Where is it? Where is it? I will show you what I'm looking for. There's a cool thing inside the dairy delivery. I have found it. <laughs> Except I wanted the white version, but inside the dairy delivery, if you could see that, let me get some better lighting. Can you see that? Um, that canister right there. It looks like a dairy can. I thought that was like nitrous. And this is inside the dairy delivery. So this sits inside there. What that is, is it's based off the real car, interestingly enough. And that is that this is based off of a 1985 Divco milk truck. I didn't know that. And if you look it up, I think I got a picture here on the screen for you. Let's uh, scoot this off to the side here. That's always my cue to put the picture up on the screen. Uh, that's the fuel tank. It was actually shaped like a milk container or, or canister, and that's the fuel tank in there. Um, Divco stands for Detroit Industrial Vehicle Company, and I don't think they make them anymore, but... Uh, I thought that was really interesting because I customize these all the time. And I thought that was like a giant nitrous container with like gallons of nitrous in it or something or supposed to be. And it's not. It's actually the fuel tank or at least part of the fuel tank. All right. Next up, Twin Mill 2. If you saw my video on the Twin Mill 2 where I attempted to tell you the history of the Twin Mill, I totally botched it. <laughs> and there have been about three three videos made sense of people dealing with the twin mills because they're out right now in the L case. And my version was just awful. I just messed it up. I didn't even notice the difference between a twin mill one and a twin mill three. So this one's a twin mill two, widely regarded as the ugly twin mill. <laughs> Anyways, there you go. Yeah, now you can go watch my video and laugh at me. I need to do another video. I really like the twin mill, but I totally botched my little history lesson. Next up, this one, real car. It's Cunningham uh, C4R, I think is the name. Yeah, it's right there in front of me, C4R. This is the five-spoke version. Um, or this is the three-spoke version. There's a five-spoke version that's worth a little bit more. It was made by Briggs Cunningham, real car. Um, the uh, guy that made it, Briggs Cunningham, that's why it's called a Cunningham, I think he was known for making engines, and this is a while back in the 50s, late 40s, 50s, maybe as early as the 30s. And he made uh, yacht engines, because that's what rich guys do, evidently. And he also made car engines, and uh, he raced yachts, but then he got into racing boat or, or cars. And um, this car was built to win the Le Mans race, so it would have gone well with our little Le Mans talk we had a while back. And uh, this one finished fourth in 1952. It was not this particular model. Again, what Hot Wheels tends to do is they take, when they can't get the licensing for a certain color combination or, or uh, uh, badging, what they'll do is combine a whole bunch of different ones together. And that's what you saw in that one was a combination of different Cunninghams. Split an image. Speaking of one of the original red lines, Good old split and image, except this isn't at all it. It's the new casting. And this is the first edition. Um, it's worth about the most of all the splitting images. That ain't saying much. This one is really ugly. It's got a pink top and an orange and a blue and... Eee. Yikes. Here's another one. If you don't like those orange wheels, well, here's another version of exactly the same car. Oh, I'm all tangled up here in my wiring. Um, 1994. If you don't like that one, well, here's another one. Why do I have so many? Well, it's because these things breed like rabbits. Nobody wants their poor split and image. I must have 
50 of these. <laughs> they come in every single lot we buy. Hey, if you don't like that one, eh, there's one too. It's just laying here on the table. Andrew was playing with it the other day. Look, they're just like rabbits. You leave these splitting images around for, splitting image twos around for more than like a day. They breed. They have little baby splitting images. They all have two heads and off they go. So next we've got ourselves the, the Chevy Bel Air, 55 Chevy Bel Air. This one's from 2007. Cool car. I don't know too much about that one. But. Sorry about that. My camera went out there. Um, so next up, Superbird. And this is one of my favorites. I love wings on the back. Um, the uh, Superbirds were only built in one year. Did you know that? 1970. Just one year of Superbirds, so you're not going to see a whole bunch of, whole bunch of Superbirds out there. Uh, the, this one's Plymouth. 70 Superbird, like I said, you're only going to see 70s. This one came out in 1910, or 2010, 1910, 2010 version with the orange stripe and the, the white paint. Um, the uh, Superbird, you probably know, and I didn't actually put this all together until recently, is the one from Cars, the blue car, the king, who is, uh, who, who ends up crashing in the last race. That's a Superbird. That was that was modeled after Richard Petty's Superbird, the blue one. Um, here's a story for you, though, and I got this off of uh, an auto auction show that I was watching. The um, mathematical formula for this wing, this giant wing in the back. For a long time, it was believed that that was a secret that um, that the Chrysler company that made them was keeping the mathematical secret on how that airflow worked across that wing. Well, it actually turns out it wasn't a highly regarded secret at all. An employee came out in an auto show that he was speaking at and said, no, it was never a secret. That's how big it had to be for the trunk to open. It's actually the distance between the trunk to swing open on that wing. And uh, that's where the wing came from. The, um, here's another story for you. I know a little bit about Superbirds. It was developed specifically for NASCAR. The reason it only came out one year for the public to buy is because NASCAR had a, a rule that the car had to be stock or sold off of the lot in order for it to compete in NASCAR. So what Plymouth did is that they, um, basically just sold the car for the minimum of one year so that all their research into putting this car on the NASCAR track could pay off. And they only really put out enough to qualify. There wasn't very many. Um, I'll tell you how many there was. There was about two, 3,000 shipped. And it depends on who you listen to on how they counted it. Most of them didn't sell. It wasn't a particularly popular car. Grandma wasn't going to buy this car off the lot. <laughs> so not with that giant wing on the back. And now the car is really really pretty rare. It was the follow-up design to the Dodge Daytona and it was a modified Roadrunner. So Roadrunner, Superbirds, all Daytonas all have something in common. Um, yeah, I think that's interesting that that's kind of the history behind the, the Superbird. So interesting, interesting. Anyways, I like that. Here's another one. I should have had this one out here while I was talking. You could have looked at it longer. A little red one happened to be out here in the garage, but so another one. This one is, is this a Superbird or is this a Daytona? Now I got them mixed up. This one might have been a Daytona. Anyways, there you go. So, the Superbird. All right, next. We got a Talbot Lago. We have seen many of these over the last couple videos. They are very front heavy. <laughs> Come on, I don't want to have to stand here and hold it. There we go. So the Talbot Lago. Um, this is interesting, though. The same year that FAO Schwartz released a gold-plated series. This is from 1995, the same year that uh, FAO Schwartz released the gold-plated series, and one of these was in the series. So -da, if you see a gold-plated one, it's from... F-A-R Schwartz, F-A-O Schwartz, not R Schwartz. 
Ice cream man's coming. Ice cream man, I can hear him. Here he comes. So here's another Thomasina. We've seen a lot of these. This one actually has Thomasina written on it. Hey, look, finally. In a video a while back, I was saying how I never saw Thomasina written on it. It's a 2000. Ice cream man. It's a 2000 first edition. So not worth anything. Sadly, going fast. Dodge Challenger. I didn't get him centered there. There we go. Can't go so fast we don't get him centered. And our little Dodge Challenger is from 2010. SRT8. Uh, there wasn't a, a Walmart exclusive color on this one. I don't remember what it was. I think it was light blue, I think. Dark blue? It was blue. I'm going with blue. It was a Walmart exclusive. If you see it, it's a little bit rarer. Next. Red, white, and blue Corvette. That's what I would paint my Corvette. <laughs> um, this one's interesting. It's It goes by a ton of names. This one is the Corvette. 1968 Corvette, I think. 63 Corvette. It goes by the 63 Stingray, a.k.a. the 63 Corvette, a.k.a. the 63 Split Window Corvette. <sighs> split Window 63 and the Corvette Split Window from 2004. This one there. So, a lot of versions of that name. Uh, Hot Wheels are killing me with the names. Killing me. We got a Mercedes. Why is my thing crooked there? Mercedes 540K. And I have lost my notes on that one. I don't know where they went. Anyway, Mercedes 540K. This is part of the Glimmer series. Metal flake plate. Metal flake paint. It's got some cool pipes on the front of that one. I don't like the blue top. The blue top clashes with the purple. So there's another another one of them guys splitting image. We saw one of those loose. We don't need to look at that one again. Montezuma. I do like this car. This is a strange car. And I spent some time this time around looking into it. I thought this was a made-up car. It's not a made-up car, really. It's a 2002, this version of it. This is from the Trump car series because, you know... Trump would drive that. I think it's supposed to be like trumped cards, but um, it's based on a 79 Monte Carlo. And I think I got a picture here, and it really does look like that. It's just a Monte Carlo with the uh, with the roof ripped off of it. Get it? It's a Montezuma, not a Monte Carlo. So almost the same car. So sort of a made-up car, unless you chop the roof off your Monte Carlo. There we got a Mazda MX-5 Miata. Extreme Speed Series 1999 with the bright green interior. Way too bright for my taste. But green. Oh, that was it. I just, just finished up. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this video. And uh, remember, we got our contest going. Check out episode 185 if you haven't already. Free stuff to win there. Check it out. The rules are posted. Again, thank you everybody. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.